Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today you will learn about a transform class in Revit API. These are the videos from my complete Revit API course. If you want to enroll in, you can reach out to me via email in the pinned comment. Make sure to watch previous lessons, especially the ones about XYZ object, because transform consists of it. Also, there's going to be one method that we haven't covered in the YouTube course, and that method is called run. And that's an extension method from the document class. I'm going to leave uh, this method in the description so you can just copy and paste this or you can simply put this uh, put whatever action we have in the transaction so this method is the replacement for creating manually a transaction this is what that method does so before getting started make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel turn on notifications and leave some comments let's get started at transform it's actually a coordinate system, and a coordinate system is a system to determine the location of points or other geometric elements. For example, in Revit, we have only one global coordinate system, and it's immutable, that means we cannot change it. To see this, we can go to Visibility Graphics, and here we can go to Side, and find the internal origin. So now we will see this. We already know a lot about vectors. So we know that our main global coordinate system has three directions. One goes to the X, one goes to the Y, and one goes to the Z. They're called basis vectors. Also, we can go to plan and also show the internal origin for the plan. There we go. So we have these three directions. And basically, why do we need this? So we can actually read information about some Revit's elements. For example, if I place a desk here, we can actually know because what I do is that I'm clicking. As you can see, I clicked and there should be my location. So how do I know what are the coordinates of that, uh, of the table? So basically, if I create here two reference planes. Now I can measure this and I can get the location, to, I can get the location of it. So that's the way we kind of were able to even take the placement point of our families correctly. That's the reason why we actually have some values for our coordinates because we have a coordinate system and based on that coordinate system we place our element. Now it's time for us to actually jump to Revit API and see what that object represents uh, from Revit API's perspective. So here we have that transform class. And as I told you, it's a coordinate system. And whenever you try to understand any geometric object in Revit, first of all, you need to know what are the main characteristics of it. And we talked with you that it has three directions. If we jump back to Revit, it has the direction of X, it has the direction of Y, and it has the direction of Z. Also, it has the location. In our case, it's 0, 0, 0, because that is the global coordinate system. But we can create our own coordinate systems in Revit. So, there are four main characteristics that you should be aware of is the first one is the origin that is the location of it and the second characteristics it's the basis vectors of it so the, the direction of x the direction of y and the direction of z and if we go to the transform class you can see that we have a constructor we have some methods we have even some operators. And if you go to properties, you will see quite a few properties. But as I told you, the ones that you should be thinking about, like whenever it comes to transform, you need to know four properties really well. These are the basis vectors. Also, you can call them from the indexer and the origin. So where is that looking on X, on Y, on Z? 
and on origin. To understand each geometric element in Revit API, we need to know how to visualize it. So now our goal is to know, is to actually create a method that will visualize our transform. But for the time being, we don't even know how to create it. So the first uh, part that we go to is we see the constructor. So right away, we know that we should actually go there and see the option how we can create it. And here we see that that is the copy constructor. And the main idea is that we need to pass another transform to it. So to use that constructor, you need to pass another transform and that will return a copy to you. So that's not our, actually our way because we need to get the transform somehow. So I, I'm going to go to the transform uh, properties and here we have a property called identity. And as you can see, tell that is the identity transformation. And what it does, as you can see, it's a static property. That means you don't need to have the instance of the transform object to actually access it. So you can simply call identity and that will give you that copy of that global coordinate system. So the identity transformation does not change a point or a vector that is applied to. It's actually quite important to be aware of this, but again, our idea right now is to just create an object of a transform class. So that's the way for us to create it. So I'm going to go back here again. You shouldn't be worried about some code that you see right now. There are some folders like geometry utils. Don't worry about this. I'm going to explain everything on our way because I've already added some things that we're not actually that we haven't gone through. So don't worry about this. So let's create a transform. I'm going to go and I'm going to go with the transform. And I'm and as you can see, I can access some of the properties. I can access actually only one property and that is called the identity. So that's the way for us to basically start our journey. So whenever you want to create a transform, you use that property identity and that will give you a copy of the transform that we have here. And let's go back to our to, to the Visual Studio. But now the main idea is that we want to go like this document run and we want to actually go with the transform and visualize it as you can see I've already created a method for this so where wh wh where's the location of that method we go to the geometry utils this is something that you will find but again what I want you to do is to not just uh, get the code from the github because as I show you something new you can actually go there and write it yourself so here in the geometry utils you will have a um, transfer extensions that's the way we work right we create extension methods for our Revit API objects because we cannot access their classes right we cannot go actually to the class of the transform and add something in there so we're using this transform classes and here I'm visualizing it. Of course, there is some topics that we haven't gone through. Uh, for example, here I'm going to override graphics of our objects. I'm going to explain to you the main idea of what I did there so you can just get the feel of it. But why I'm not going to go in depth because here we're using the override graphics settings. And for the time being, we we're not we haven't covered that topic. We're going to cover this in future. But I want us to be able to show the to actually see the transform right to visualize it because it's going to be easier for us. So here what I'm doing is that I'm creating colors that I want to apply. Right. So here I'm basically getting the as you can see here I have the transform I get the basis of transforms I create lines as you can see I go select line create line origin then origin plus X 
which is going to be my vector. So my it's pretty easy to be honest. If you under if you remember how we did this with plane, right? So what are the main characteristics of the plane? We know that we want to see this as some sort of a, like a rectangle, and we want to see the the normal of it. So that's the same way that we work with transform. You can even, without even checking that out, you can even try to write it yourself because you should already know that to visualize a, a point, you will already have a method for this. And our transform has the origin. So that is responsible for this. To visualize each vector, we need to actually create a line and a line will be, so the start of the line will be the origin of the transform and then we'll take that origin and move it along the vector so for example if i go back to revit here and let's say i have some vector like that we know that vector has why vector has only one like has only one point in revit api because the start of the vector is always here is always the beginning of the global coordinate system. So if you want to visualize it from here, we need to first of all take the origin that and move that origin along a given vector. So again, play around with this and try to even visualize it on your own. The only one thing that you may not uh, be aware of is the how we use the override graphics. It's pretty easy. I just override the graphics of the direct shape that I create. It's it's not that complicated. So basically, the main idea that I do here is that I go with the I create all the lines that I need to visualize and I zip them to the colors that I have here. Check out please about the zip method. That is a link extension. That'll help you to understand how we can zip two lists together. It's kind of also a great way of sometimes kind of map uh, two lists. So make sure to just Google that zip and see some examples of it. It's pretty easy to just Google that and see some applications of it. And here I'm visualizing this again. For the time being, we're not going to go in depth here because it's not the main topic of that of that lesson. So here we can visualize it. So now what I can do is that I'm going to go back to Revit. I'm going to go to my add-in manager and I'm going to call this selection command and run. As you can see, I have visualized it. I just changed the length of this so that is kind of visible. I didn't take the length from the vector because I want this to be visible. As you can see, I maintain uh, the colors, right? So it's easier for us to notice. Actually, what I wanted to show you, because what we did all the time is that here we, to reuse the command, we would go here to add in manager, and I have a shortcut AM for that. We would click on the command and click run. But what if we want to call the same command, right? So the command that we just used, so the last command, we can actually use these add in manager manual modal uh, faceless. So here I have a shortcut AF for this, but if you click on it, it will actually call the last command that you used in here. So that is really a shortcut and that's a, a really fast way of recalling that command. Even if you have a shortcut, it's, it's really easy and it's really fast. Are there actually any elements that have their own transform slash coordinate system? Basically, let's kind of analyze, right? So you can first analyze it for the wall, for example, right? So I have a shortcut for snoop current selection uh, from snoop current selected element. And here we can scroll down and basically analyze whether it has it or not. To be honest, it doesn't. And the main reason being for this is because the wall is created in the current document, right? So we know that we have system families. There are like walls, uh, floors, so on and so forth. And the main question that you should ask yourself is where these elements are generated, in what environment? 
and basically they're generated here in the current document. So we can get their location curve, for example, right? And get some information about their points and how they are located related to the global coordinate system, where their location is. But do we have some elements that we built in a different environment? And the answer is yes. This is our family instances. They are completely built in a different environment. So if we open a family, we can go to views and here we can see that here we create, we have their own origin, right? So here we have the origin of the family. So when we go to Revit and we place them, we actually place it based on the origin that we defined here. So these are the elements, the components in Revit that have their own environment where they're built. And let's understand how that works from, uh, from the Revit's point of view. So at the end of the day, all of that all of these families, right? The whole family is just a bunch of geometry. That's the main idea of it. It's just a geometry. So how does Revit actually goes there? And so if you go here and how we can place it there, how we can rotate it like this and the geometry stays consistent. It doesn't break. We can easily rotate it, like move it. How does that work? With the help of that coordinate system. So here we just defined a geometry in its normal position when the X goes to the right, Y goes up, and Z goes up in the three-dimensional space. And then when we place it here in the Revit document, the transformation is getting applied to these elements. Okay, that may sound a little bit not easy to grasp, a little bit difficult to digest, but let's analyze, first of all, let's analyze that family instance. So I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go to the Snoop Current Selected Element. And here, if we scroll down, you'll see the hierarchy. And so the first element in the hierarchy is element. The second one is instance. And the third one is family instance. So that instance has two methods, get total transform and get transform. To be honest, from my experience, I didn't see any leverage uh, like uh, of get total transform over get transform. I think they give us pretty much the same result. At the end of the day, they give us the transform. And as you can see here, that transform stores information about vectors, about like its origin, about its scale, so on and so forth. So again, to understand this, let's visualize it. Let's simply visualize it. So I'm gonna go to Revit, to our Visual Studio, and I'm gonna go and get that transform from the family. So I'm gonna go var uh, transform, and I'm gonna type uh, UI document, get selected element. I'm going to go as the first one. Right now, I don't have that method of getting the total transform because I need to cast it. So I go as family instance, as family instance. Right now, I'm going to put this in parentheses. So right now, I can use get total transform. So as you can see, I'm, I'm getting the currently selected element. Uh, the current element that we've selected. I'm casting this so I can get the properties of that instance because that method returns just an element and a simple element doesn't have, doesn't have a get total transform method. So we need to go there and cast it to the family instance or just to instance to actually get it. So we can even go like this instance. That's also perfectly all right. 
So let's go there and I already used that command, right? So I can click instead of going there and clicking add in manager, I can use this option and I have a shortcut for this AF. Wait a minute. Do we, are we visualizing it? Yes, that should be all right. Okay, let's go from the add-in manager actually. Let's try it do from there. Yeah, there we have it. Let's kind of go back and see if that works. Yeah, everything works right now. As you can see, that is the transform that that family has. The main thing that I want you to see here is the vectors, right? So the vectors are really kind of crucial there. Uh, so here we have a, a vector uh, that is responsible for the x direction because it's in red. Then we have the y, which is like the facing one, and we have the z, which simply goes up. So as you can see, what happens with our geometry is that, first of all, it was in its normal position, if we go to the family, where x is going here, y is going there, and z is moving up in the three-dimensional space. But then we just say that here we have right now not that transform, but this one. So what does it mean? That first of all, we can create our own transforms, right? The next thing is that transform, we have a transform for our family instances. And the main reason why they have it is because they're built in a different environment, right? So they know about their transformation. They know about how they're rotated relative to the global, transform, global transform, global coordinate system of this one, right? So they know about that X vector. They know about that Y vector. We know about that Z vector, basically, just by having this, we can compare uh, like that x vector with this vector. We can get their rotation. We can do a lot of different manipulations with that. The main idea is, the, is that we have this and we can read it. The main question that you may ask, but why do we even need it? For what kind of scenarios do we need it? Actually, it's for a lot of reasons. Sometimes you need to just to simply analyze element, right? So whenever you have two transforms, right? We have a transform from our family and we have a basis, a global transform. And sometimes what we wanna do is that we wanna perform some sort of like calculation because keep in mind the transform can be kind of a little bit more complicated than just this. It can be like a three dimensional in terms of the, for example, the X, um, the X vector can be three dimensional. So in that case, everything will be rotated. So we can actually perform some analysis and for example, even align elements. So imagine that you have a pipe, right? Or a conduit, you have that three, uh, three dimensional line and you can align this to the X vector, to the Y vector, to the Z vector, uh, do a lot of actually calculation. So the first usage is like calculation. The second usage that I use that a lot is for just moving my geometry. Sometimes I need to get the geometry and that is something that we're gonna uh, check out a bit later, how to get the geometry of these elements and basically move them somewhere, right? That, that can be also done with the help of transform. And basically the name implies that the name is pretty self-explanatory, is the transform, it's for transforming elements. Also, we will cover a, such an element that is called bounding box, which is an amazing element that can give you a lot of benefit. And to be honest, this is the part where you will, where you will master uh, transform uh, because you would need to deal uh, a lot of with this, especially when uh, we will start uh, creating views, especially sections. This is the part where you will master uh, transforms uh, and all important characteristics of this. For the time being, you need to understand that that is the coordinate system. It has a couple of really crucial properties that you need to be aware of. 
and this is the origin as you can see the origin is here this is where it's located then it has three main directions x y uh, and z right so it's where they're looking right and also you need to know that so we have the basis vectors for a transform also that our family instances because they're built in a different environment they know about their transformation according to the global transform they know that according to the global transform this is their location and this is the vectors of them and this is called a local transform or a local coordinate system so we have one global coordinate system this one and all the local coordinate systems that we can create ourselves or we can get them from family instances for example now it's time for us to actually create again our own coordinate system our own transform but start applying translation to this start moving this so what are the options do we have what options do we have to actually move it so first of all uh, we can analyze we can go to our uh, to the documentation first of all we have we know that we have the property for it like the origin and we need to check whether we can set it and we can right so we have an option for get and we have an option for set for getting and setting setters and getters so we have that option so that means that here we can create a transform by doing transform identity and then go transform uh, go to the origin and let's say new xyz and let's go one on the x or like three on the x one on the y and zero on the z again we know we have an option to visualize it so go to revit and to visualize it i'm clicking af again i have a shortcut for it so for add-in manager and i'm i'm not going there because i don't need to because that was the previous command that was the last command that i used and to actually make sure that everything works the way we expected uh, so what i'm going to do there is that i'm going to change units i'm going to change units to decimal feet and if i measure this okay i need to actually draw to reference planes there so if I measure this it's going to be three it's going to be one there we have it so we can create it so that's the way we can move this but can we actually apply some uh, like addition or multiplication for example let's go with the transform origin multiply equal to two Right, so that means two times bigger let's go there and there we have it as you can see it seems that that worked right now it's six and now it's two so that's another way of actually adding so if you want to add to this so that's the way for you to change its origin and if we go to our transform class and check out some of the methods we can see the method that use that that is called create translation if you read the uh, description of it it tells us that it creates a transform that represents a translation via the specified vector so the main idea is that it's gonna take your vector and move it right but what is really important here that that is a static uh, that is a static method that means that you cannot actually grab your existing uh, the one that you've created right that transform so if I call if I take that transform I don't have an option to use that method because it's a it's a static method so we don't need to have an instance of that transform class we don't need to have an object of this we can simply go like this create translation so let's kind of remove these let's kind of go var transform and here i'm going to put that new xyz let's say three again one and zero let's even go one on the on this attic as well 
So that option, use that option whenever you have an origin, whenever you want to create a transform with a specified origin. But what it does is that basically we have that transform. We have that transform. And what it does when we say, let me even, I'm going to create it. There we have it. As you can see, that was moved. And what it does, it takes that transform and applies a vector to it. So it moves that along that vector. And what it takes, takes the vector from the beginning to here and just moves that. So whenever you find yourself in a situation when you want to create a transform and set the origin to this right away, you can actually use two uh, two methods for that option. You can use a method called create translation or you can change the origin of your transform directly. What if we want to rotate our transform? Basically we have two ways and one way is really complex and it's not even worth considering. This is usage of, this is can be done with the help of trigonometry. Trigonometry is awesome, and I showed you the application for this, but it's not something that should be used here. So if I go to Revit and I go to level level one, for example, so these are my main axes. Imagine that you want to create something. I'm just going to draw really quickly. Uh, okay, I need to have, okay, where's that angle? Gosh, yeah, there we have it. So now we have a 90 degree relationship there. And uh, what is happening here? Imagine that you want to create a transform like this without using some methods that Revit API provides to us. You would actually need to do a lot of mathematical things, a lot of, a lot of trigonometry. So now if you do something like this, uh, if you lie perpendiculars, so there you can actually see that you have some lags or you have a, hor a, a horizontal lag, you have a vertical lag, you may calculate like the angle and then with the help of trigonometry you would actually define where your y should be, uh, what is the coordinate of the y should be and all of this stuff. I don't even want to show you this because it involves some trigonometry, uh, some trigonometry functions, and I want to show you trigonometry on real examples that you would need to. But you would almost never use trigonometry for rotating your, uh, your, your transform, your coordinate system, because we have methods for this. And here we have create rotation and create rotation at point. The first thing that you do is that you check, you analyze what what that method is. And here we know that that method is a static one. That means that that method is not used from the instance of a transform. That method can be used by simply typing something like that. Transform, create rotation. So you define around what axis you want to rotate. So if I go back to Revit, it's like, it's like using a revolve to understand how this works. Uh, I hope you all familiar with uh, Revit things like creating a revolve. So if you go to a family environment, so go to added family, and here you have a geometry called revolve. And the way that that works is that you select um, an axis. For example, if I go and click on revolve, you select an axis line, so a line around which your geometry will be kind of revolved, right? And then, for example, you create a rectangle. So let's go to 3D and analyze that object. So what we did there is that we, create, we selected this line which has the direction of the X, right? So that is the X. So we selected the X. How we can see how that was rotated is by changing this end angle and start angle. For example, 250, there we have it. So as you can see, that that's that the way that rotates. So the rotation around X will be a simply 
if you really have trouble understanding like what does it mean around what axis I rotate, you go to a family editor, for example, and you say, you know what, I want to rotate around, or you can actually create a model in place. What you need to do is to, for example, go on a floor plan, select the axis of the X, right? So that, that is the axis basically, and then define some shape and then play around with these angles. So what does it mean that now you know that whenever you rotate around X, they will be rotated like this. Now let's see that in practice a bit. So let's go there and rotate around Z. X, Y, Z, I want to rotate it around Z and my angle should be 30. But again, we know that we should pass it in radians. So I'm going to go to radians. So we have created that extension method that I showed you in the vector part. So I'm going to, I'm going to simply build it. I'm going to go back to Revit and I'm going to call this method by clicking AF. So there we have it. We've generated again. Oops. If you, if you kind of have, again, if you have troubles understanding why, uh, like that was rotated like this, again, you go to some sort of like a family editor, uh, you remove this. So you go to, for example, in that case, so to you select the vector around which you selected, you select a vector around, around which you want to rotate your geometry. So you go to front, for example, uh, and you go create, revolve. Uh, now I hope we have some center, center front that should be. Doesn't that matter, but axis line. So you select the, vac the rotation axis, which, will, which goes to the up. Then you specify, you create that geometry. You go to 3D. Let's kind of isolate it. So you go to front. And now you can check that angles. As you can see how that rotates. So for example, our if we kind of imagine and we draw some uh, analogies. So here we had, let's go to top. So here we have it that way, right? So we have it there and we decided to rotate it there around these Z vector. So as you can see, it was like that where was our uh, X vector and we rotated there. It's kind of really not that complicated to understand. But now what we're thinking about is, okay, but how do we have like multiple uh, rotations in terms of what if I already have a transformation, a transform like that, and I want to rotate it like er, again at some particular angle, right? In that case, what do you need to do? What you can do is that if you go to Revit API documentation is you have an option to multiply your transforms and also you have an operator for this. So you can either use the operator or you can use a method called multiply. And what it does, it basically multiplies two vectors. So let's kind of see what it does. So we're going to go to Visual Studio and I'm going to create another uh, transform. So it's a silly name. Let's go with the transform uh, around X and that will be transform around Z. And now I'm going to rotate it around X. And let's visualize both of them. Transform around X, transform around Z. Let's kind of first visualize them and see how everything works. Again, so we have, it's kind of a bit complicated, but we have the first one like this. And then we have a second one that was rotated around X, right? Something like this. So again, we took this vector and we simply, so the, 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 axis that we define as a rotation axis that axis that stay that stays that stays completely static it doesn't change it's immutable other vectors are rotating around it so here as you can see it was moved there let's kind of multiply them both so here let's kind of go remove this part and go with the third vector like 
uh, combined transform, and I'm going to go transform around Z, multiply to transform around X, or you can use a multiplication sign. And now I'm going to say combine transform visualize in the current document. There we have it. So now if we see this, if we check that out, now we see that it was rotated around Z. And if I go here and I decide to take a measurement there, it is 30, right? Then if, right, so, and that was also rotated around X by 30 degrees. So that's the way we can apply multiple transformations. Again, where that can be useful, in what kind of scenarios. Again, you can basically have any kind of vector, right? For example, even a 3D vector, right? That has X, Y, and Z. So that has three coordinates. And you can define the calculation, like uh, what is the angle I need to, what an angle I need to align this on the Z vector, right? So if you have, imagine that here we have a vector, right? Like this. And imagine that, that is a 3D vector, right? It also has a Z coordinate. You can simply compare it with the Y vector, get the rotation between them, right? Then rotate it here. Then you can get the rotation, like how much you need to rotate uh, your element to actually match a 3D space. It actually comes with experience and I'm going to show you uh, some practical things for that. I really want to just show you that how that works, how cool is that, and how you can uh, build something with this. So, so far we know that we can create transforms with the help of identity, like getting that static property called identity. Even if I go to the properties of that, we can even ask whether it's identity. As you can see, the Boolean value that indicates whether this transformation is an identity. So basically, whenever you use uh, identity, and that is actually your starting point, and right away you check if that is identity, it will return you true. Also, we, has, we have a property called is translation, which basically here we have a method. We go create translation. It's a static method. And if you use that method and then go to the properties and use the property is translation, you will have the true. It will return the true value to you. As you can see, you can that way you can analyze this. Also, you can actually see that some methods, uh, we didn't use some methods. I'm going to show you pretty much all of them. But for example, here we have an option to scale, but that is something that we're not using a lot in Revit, right? Especially when it comes to uh, having this in combination with Revit elements because we're not scaling them, right? We're scaling only, like we can scale some solid geometries that we're creating ourselves. So this is where that can be helpful. Also, as you can see, we can check the whether they're almost equal. So whether transform, whether they're equal, also can be quite useful. But again, that method was about rotation. So here you have two options. So we use that one. Also, you can rotate at a specific origin. Again, just you can play around with this, see some usages for that. But the main idea is that do not use trigonometry for rotating your transforms. You have already great functions provided to you by Revit API. So use them instead. That's it for this lesson. I hope it was helpful. Keep in mind that if you want to enroll in the complete Revit API course that will take you from the very beginner to the uh, complete Revit API master, uh, make sure to reach out to me via the email that I pinned in the that, that is stored in the pinned comment. Also make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and leave some comments. Thank you all for watching and have a nice day.